Hey guys, Bitter Steel here, back with another video, and today we'll be saving another disaster. And we will be playing as the Soviet Union under Joseph Stalin. And, well, this man is getting Barbarossa, and he's getting Barbarossa hard. Does not look too favorable, I'd say. Iron Man mode is on, and historical AI also on, so let's see just how bad things really are. That army composition is a mess. What? Why? Okay, I, I need more information. Who are we fighting? Right, regular axe? Ah! So we've got Turkey on our side, and it looks like Romania and the Baltics. Okay. So much to do here. Uh, who's in the war? Nobody. So it's just us and the allies against the Axis. None of our puppets or faction members are in. That's good. Never call them in unless you really need the help or access to their territory. Like, you've got the right idea here this is the terrain you want to defend i mean the the dnieper line is excellent just to the north here i i would cut it off here not go all the way up to the baltic sea just cut it up here it's a lot shorter it will help and around kiev here i would try to hold on to kiev mostly because of supply because this is where the regional supply hub is and without kiev this is like a supply dead zone. It's very, very hard to defend this region. Uh, same goes for Dnipropetrovsk. Either defend Dnipropetrovsk as well, or build supply hubs behind the front. Same for uh, Kiev. Without supply, those troops will either not be able to hold, or have a hell of a time holding. Rest looks reasonably okay, but first off, in your position, the way your faction is set up, I would not have fallen back to the Dnieper line. Why? This is super narrow. Just fight in the pole territories you took from Poland? Fight here. It is incredibly narrow. You're not fighting on your own terrain. You get to keep a lot of your industry and you can stack 240 divisions into this bottleneck and Germany will never get past it. Also, ambitious naval invasion? But no, no, this is not the time for naval invasions. Okay, okay. I'll reorganize the army off screen. This is a mess. I, I want it clean. What else do we have? Focuses. Seems reasonable. I would not have gone for this branch here. The uh, these focuses aren't that good. Same for the anti-capitalist policies. What? You recover Alaska? Oh no. Ah! My boy did it. He got Alaska. I'm surprised the USA gave that up. I, I would not have focused my time here. Instead, you would have been much better off either going for the industry, get foreign experts, develop the Urals, etc. This is really good. You want this stuff. You could have gotten more out of the industry. It's not terrible, but I would have liked to see more here. And then the big one, the really big one, you did not do anything to buff your army. Like The Red Army is terrible at the start. And you want to go through this tree to fix it. You want go cohesion first. You want rehabilitated military and you want military reorganization before the war even starts. This is huge. This is absolutely huge. Not to mention experts in camouflage. This will keep the Germans from shredding whatever you put into the field. Anyway, stop doing this. We're not going on a trip to Saudi Arabia. Let's instead get cohesion first and try to keep the Red Army in one piece, which looks like it's going to be a bit of a challenge. So you've got the right idea here. You're defending the coastline, probably miss you don't need that many troops defending the coastline and with Romania and Turkey under control and the Black Sea essentially open your navy has all the superiority it needs here to control the Black Sea you don't need this many troops to guard the ports or the entire shoreline these troops will be much better served on the front lines speaking of front lines oh god I'm gonna delete all these orders I'll redraw them and give you a quick heads up once I'm done it's it's gonna take a while let's check out the rest so your political cabinet it's not great, but Stalinist Russia doesn't really get all that much, I guess. That's fine. This is just plain bad. You do not go up the surface by requirement this early. There's no point. You have 2.3 million men still. Why are you even mobilizing more men? Your previous conscription law hasn't even filled in fully. You're needlessly hamstringing your economy for this. For men you don't need. You're Russia. You have all the men you could possibly want. I would have spent more time picking out a military high command, to be honest, because you're getting trashed out there. So let's start by hiring Vatutin here, at least get some infantry bonuses going, and that's gonna be it. All right, uh, stability, war support's great, factories. 
It's not a lot of factories, my man. What are you making? Tons of infantry equipment. Okay, so you're 4,000 artillery pieces short. You're 7,000 tanks short. Then, of course, there's AA. 7,000 trucks? What? I need to check your army composition. But I can tell you straight off, heavy fighters? No. I'll allow you casts. I'll even allow you strat bombers. They can be fun. Put more into fighters. AA is fine. Trucks, fine. I want to say medium tanks are good. But medium tanks are just... <laughs> Ever since No Step Back, tanks haven't been cost effective. All the IC you put into tanks, might as well put them into casts and you'll get more bang for your buck. But since you've got tanks, you know what? I'll indulge you. I just want to see what you're... Oh, no. Oh, it's like you did everything wrong here. Okay, quick overview. For tanks, just get diesels or gasoline. I like gasoline, they're a little faster. Do not get cast armor unless you have a mighty economy, which honestly, you don't. You really don't. This is not the world's greatest Soviet Union. Just stick with welded. It will be fine. As for suspension, eh, could be said that you've made a good choice. I prefer the Christie suspension. It's a little quicker. As for your turret, medium turret, pick the three-man turret. It's a little more expensive, but it is so much better on the breakthrough. And then for your gun, you don't really have any guns unlocked, do you? This is a limited selection of guns you've got here. Have you done any research? Just slap a medium cannon on it for now, and then just increase the speed a little, and the armor. Just try to keep reliability over 80%. So something like this. Oh wait, I can add a radio. Ah, radio. And I like wet ammo storage because it allows me to do some stuff stuff with the armor and engine. There. I think this is decent. It's a little less expensive as well. It's a lot better than what you have. Sorry, man. It's just what you made isn't good. No offense. Let's see what you're feeling that. Oh, yeah, you're trying to make tanks without having tanks. So no tanks. Infantry. Okay. And motorized. Yeah, no. Ah, I see your problem here. You're trying to make 14 fours. Either make tanks or go for big infantry divisions. 14 fours are not uh, quote unquote meta anymore, but still, this is a big infantry division. Pick one. Don't do both. Your industry cannot handle it, especially your industry. Seriously, either go tanks or go big on artillery. This is the, the biggest cost of the infantry units. Uh, I recommend no 14 fours. Just get rid of them. That leaves us with regular infantry. We'll finish the run we're doing and we'll cancel a couple of these because we do not really have a lot of equipment in stock. No, something like this I'll allow to finish and deploy somewhere near the front. Okay, are we still a lot of stuff short? We are still a lot of stuff short. Let's check research. <sighs> Special forces, there's there's no point to doing this. I'm sorry, especially as Russia, there's no point to it. Be better off getting better infantry equipment. Uh, support, yeah, you're probably gonna want logistics companies and just straight up upgrades to everything else. Construction, yeah, you're a little behind on your industry, like a lot on uh, production. This is very important, don't fall behind here. Uh, what else? This is okay. I would have gone more into radar or if you have the research slot for computing machine. Air is good. You kept air up to date. That's nice. Navy, fine. You didn't. Oh, God. You always want to keep your artillery up to date. This is essentially worthless by this time. You want the big guns. You want the good artillery. You should be having this in your production queue, not this unbuffed garbage. So this is our new priority. Same for the AA. AA is only useful if you keep it up to date. Otherwise, you might as well just be shooting pea shooters. Okay, so don't get the better infantry equipment. No, let's just instead work on the artillery. Oh, I don't really have the research slots. I, I want logistics companies, but I don't think I can. I don't think I can justify the expense right now. Oh, there's so much to do. No, let's get improved machine tools first. What are you building? Where is Kurzim? Don't don't bother with this. Seriously, this is not even supposed to be front line. It's fine. Don't don't do anything there. There. Plug that into the naval base and you'll be fine. It mostly looks like you're building mills, which is usually a good idea. And then an assortment of garbage. I'm gonna get rid of everything in your queue and start fresh. And I'll let you know what my thinking is so you can, can get a little bit of a glimpse of why certain decisions are just not great. If you've got two mills that are almost done, I'll, I'll keep production going on those. But after those are done, well, before those are done, we need to work on the railway network. Since you've decided to give up the left bank of the Dnieper River, we need to account for that because we are going going to lose parts of our supply network. Namely here, Chernigov around Kiev. We need a supply hub here. This needs to supply this region. Without a supply hub, nothing will happen. It is the top priority for us right now. Get that supply hub built. Other than that, the railway is going to be cut in certain areas. So we need to make sure we have a fallback option. And we also need to upgrade the rail
availability along other parts of the network, simply because it, it cannot get enough supply to the troops in the field. That is our number one priority, ensuring that our army is able to get supply. Another tip here down in Kherson or Zafrosia, what you want to do here is build a naval base and plug that naval base into the railway network, avoid the front lines, it messes with construction times, and that will allow this region to also get supply. Even when you hold on to the Dnipropetrovsk, it will give this general area supply, but the tip here on Kherson tends to be out of supply, so a naval base here will help. As far as the rest is concerned, it's just gonna be a matter of upgrading railways to like level three is usually enough. Level one and two just doesn't cut it for the amount of troops the Soviet Union has in the region. It's, it's just not enough. You wanna upgrade these networks. Uh, easiest way to do that is to go into the supply map mode, select the node you wanna upgrade, and click this button here. So click that once and it will upgrade everything along its path once you can click that until it turns gray and that means you've maxed it out and it will get added to the queue here all right i'm, I'm just gonna do military reorganization off screen because it's just it's a mess all right it's a giant mess but i am gonna tell you what i'm gonna do i'm gonna take all of your tanks out assign them to their own separate armies and then i'm gonna standardize your infantry so everything is using the exact same infantry template namely your cheapest infantry so these boys and if we have the artillery available, I'll change them into something like this. 21 combat with 9 infantry, 1 artillery. But we'll have to see how our supplies hold. Okay, so I'm done reorganizing. What I've done is just take everyone who was on port guard and turn that off. Then I split off all your tanks into a single army, put them under Zukov, and I'm gonna send them to Moscow so I can reorganize them because most of these units are really, really weak. Plus the templates just, it needs work. Then the rest of the front is under two two field marshals. I've tried to organize the units and generals so they are assigned to parts of the front that they're actually at. So all the units that were in the south, more or less, have been assigned to the army trying to hold the south here. And all of the units that were already in the north up here are now assigned to the front trying to hold the north. So hopefully that works out. We'll, we'll have to see. Um, I've just tried to minimize the amount of travel the units need to do. That's, that's it. Try to consolidate these lines. This this is going to be our biggest, biggest challenge. So what I'm going to do here with these two tiles, they will be constantly under attack and they will be constantly low on supply. I will try and move reserves up here uh, so I can switch them in and out of combat. And whenever I get a situation like this, a low bubble that we are definitely 100% going to lose, I'm going to split off the units that are on those tiles, at least the weakest ones, like two divisions each. So like that, give them a fallback line there. Doesn't really matter. It won't last. And then I'm just going to assign them a random general who is available. It doesn't even matter who. Here, Enrique will do. And then I'm just going to hit last stand. This is a cheap way to get last stand because the fewer units under that general, the cheaper last stand becomes. I could make this even cheaper than the current 12.5. Instead of doing it to four, I could just do four individual last stands, but I just don't want to bother. It's too much micro for my, my smooth brain head. And all we can really do now is build up the supply network so we can get a supply hub near Kiev. If we can get that done, you should have enough army units to be able to hold. At least I think you do. Still quite a bit of equipment short though. That's, uh, that is concerning. I suppose I could delete these 13 units who are currently doing nothing but standing around guarding your ports. Because like, I have assigned, uh, like these 13 leftovers just to guard your ports in the south and the north. You, you don't need a naval invasion now. Speaking of naval, um, I suppose you can use the Black Sea's fleet for some mine laying doesn't hurt doesn't help rest of the navy though here in the baltic yeah you're not gonna do much um just group them up and send them back to port because you are not gonna naval invade germany sorry just not happening air force is looking all right but again needs reorganizing so i'm just gonna delete all these air wings and put up all the fighters you have and go from there and finally spies i see you're doing collaboration governments and for the time being i'm gonna use the spies on the front to help reduce the enemy's bonuses against us it does really help ease the pressure off if you can get some spies going on your borders. I think that's it. What I'm gonna do here is just pin these divisions into place so I can maneuver these positions into the uh, appropriate tiles and from then we'll have to see what happens. We'll just have to see what happens. Gonna unpause and let the carnage begin. This is gonna suck. Oh yeah, these, these troops need to withdraw. Just get away. Get out of these marshes. They're very defensible. I, I just don't want to defend them. Looks like unpausing helped update 
update the logistics tab, so we're not that much stuff short anymore. So maybe I can make some changes. Also, this is still training, so leave that to run. This is a decent template, like I said. I, I kind of want to add stuff like recon and logistics companies, though. I'm going to add recon companies. That should give us a little bit of an edge. And then your tank divisions. This is a little too small for a tank division. I prefer to have these like big, really big, either 30 width, which is easy to remember, or like 42 combat with like heavy chunky boys but we're a little limited by our current options uh, so we'll, we'll see what we can do this area around kiev is gonna be a nightmare i'm just constantly going to be pushing last stand buttons i know i know i know it's not great but I don't really have a lot of options, do I? <laughs> I? I cannot afford to lose this side of the river. If I lose this side of the river, things become much more complicated. Oh, and we're about to get five divisions encircled here. Ah, shite. You know what? Mimi, yes, but I'm gonna disband them before they get encircled. Should have withdrawn in good order, but alas. Okay, I'm gonna get fresh ones out, though. I don't know what army they belong to, but they're gonna be lacking troops now. Oh, the amount of pressure we're under is amazing, astounding, painful. Every time I see a red bubble in a critical location like here, just assign them a general, hit last stand, and hope the god regular infantry moves in to reinforce it on time, because oh boy, I don't want to lose this side of the river. Lost construction's going at least this seems to be okay, more or less. Well, considering how much uh, infantry equipment we suddenly have in stock, I don't think I'll need to make as much. I'll leave 15 factories on it. Don't need that much on support equipment either. I'll just leave 10 on that. I'll need a little... No. I'll leave it on the artillery as is. I'm just going to put it big on fighters. I need fighters. Speaking of fighters, uh, I see you have fighter twos and you have the design bureau. So you kind of want to apply the buff from the design bureau. What you do then is select the fighters you're making. You hit the create variant button and jack up the engine. Engine is the most important item for a fighter to upgrade. And there we go. Now they get the bonus. Higher agility is all that matters for fighters. Well, not all, but almost all. Of course, we are getting shredded in the air as one would expect kind of tempted just to ground our air force until we can build it up a little i don't want to get everybody just shot down oh almost forgot to look at this so you've got a good land doctrine superior firepower mass assault would have worked but this is good you've gone the right side that's nice i can work with this didn't assign anyone here you kind of wanna first one doesn't really matter that much engineering schools is good spirit of the army you kind of want either professional officer corps to get yourself more army xp and cheaper doctrines or you want Want overwhelming firepower for oh no wait i'm wrong elevated engineering corps to dig in to really be able to hold i would go with professional officer corps and then lastly spirit of divisional command static warfare is nice if you want some good old-fashioned trench warfare flexible organization is one of my favorites faster units are just great they get everywhere before the enemy gets there giving you an advantage and smoke and fire if you just want to blast things apart also a good one maybe we should look at getting a chief of the army more military high command and a theorist you kind of want a military military theorist early because it, it's just 10% cheaper doctrine cost. It adds up in the long run. Okay, this last stand is about to run out and it's still very critical. So the instant it finishes, ah, are they still in combat? No, they're no longer in combat. Okay, cycle in new units. It's as simple as that. Just keep cycling units. I've taken the unit that's withdrawing, assigned it to a different army, taken a fresh unit or at least unit that's not withdrawing from the front line, added to this general and hit last stand and we're good to go for another seven days. Is it cheesy? Yes. Does it work? Also yes. So it looks like most of the line is stable. Like the Dnieper line is a very good defensive position. Like I said, it's just gonna be Kiev that is uh, bound to be a nightmare until we complete this supply hub. God, we need that supply hub and it's gonna take until June 1942. So we're here for the next, uh, what, five? Five months suffering, so yay. That's gonna cost us a lot of men. So I just consolidated your tank divisions. What we ended up with is two full strength tank divisions and a tank division that doesn't have any tanks. So from those, what was it, 12, 13? We end up with three that are actually operational. It's a little sad. Uh, I've assigned all, a lot of factories to tanks already. Don't really like that, but we'll make it work. Add a couple of fresh ones to the queue and we'll see if we can ever get a tank, <laughs> a tank offensive going against Germany. Our number one priority though is going to be survival, just straight up survival. All right, with research finishing, I'm just gonna quickly tell you what I'm gonna do so you don't have to keep repeating myself. I'm gonna get your industry up and running. You're a little behind, but it's not terrible here, especially production. And I'm going to go big on your artillery. You are so far behind here that your artillery and anti-air are virtually 
useless. And support companies, I'm gonna get you logistics companies. Logistics are going to be a lifesaver in this situation, considering we got a lot of red on our front line. So that's, that is our current priority. All that and trying desperately not to get pushed away from the Dnieper line. The rest seems green. Most of the line is green. It's just, uh, okay. It's, it's just these two tiles and that's not gonna change anytime soon. Also, I'm not gonna call any of our faction members into the war. No matter who I call in, they are gonna call in Lithuania. If Lithuania gets called in, this entire front line becomes a whole lot bigger. Well, like one, two, three, three tiles bigger? I'd rather not. It's enough as it is. I don't need their help anyway, it's the AI. What are they gonna do? Get in the way. One thing I forgot, occupy territories. Don't use martial law. If you're the Soviet Union, use liberated workers. It works much better. And if it's an area you're occupying for a very, very long time, so let's say from, from 37 or 38, just set it to civilian oversight. This ends up being best long term. Uh, liberated workers for the Soviets ends up being best short term. Also, use either the cavalry or the NKVD. Cavalry is probably better, but NKVD has military police in it. Then for your recruit and deploy reinforcements, set that to high. Also forgot to mention that garrisons to high. Everything else leaves standard. Y you just want your troops in the field to get their stuff first when you're at war. That matters a lot more than getting more divisions out, usually. Considering you already have 240 divisions on the front, I, I think we have enough. I'd, I'd rather those divisions actually be, you know, competent. Casualties so far don't look that great. Uh, 400,000 on our side. Oof. And we've killed, we've only killed 170,000 Germans. So you were really getting overrun there, I feel. You could have easily defended this though. So I, I don't really know what went wrong for you, but you had a good idea in picking the Dnieper line. It's just, your preparation could have been a lot better. You know, supply, kind of a big deal with no step back. God, these last stands are turning into such a mess. The divisions take massive, massive damage, but at least we're holding. We just got to ride out the storm here. Eventually we'll, we'll stabilize. At least there's some hope for us here. Greece still hasn't fallen, so they're distracting some troops there. Hopefully, maybe, that can be a beachhead for an allied invasion. Never count on the AI to be helpful though, never. Oh, this is such a balancing act. Just laying at a slow speed, trying to get back-to-back -back last stands in, just so I don't have to withdraw. Oh, I'm sorry if this is cheesy, guys, but sacrifices have to be made for the motherland. One good thing about Romania being here, as well as Turkey, is they are drawing a lot of divisions away from the front. Simply being in our faction but not in the war means the AI will stack troops on their border and those troops are not on our border. That's uh, call that a win for us. Definitely a win for us. Okay, we got cohesion first. I'm gonna get rehabilitated military and then either desperate measures or foreign experts and get the extra research slot because military reorganization is a good thing because it leads to some really nice focuses. We cannot afford to take it right now. For 70 days, our army would have no army XP gain, 10% less org, 15% less orc re -orc, um, regain so this would really hurt us i don't think we can afford it right now not with the pressure we're under so i'll just take rehabilitated military improve our army a little bit we're still holding though so that's big i, I hadn't expected to hold on to this side of the Dnieper for this long okay we also got the political power changes i will make here is go back down to extensive conscription that's fine that's more than enough for now our casualties are really not that high then add to the military high command uh probably get the army regrouping expert and Konya for the concealment. Military staff, we'll see what we can pick here. These are not great. Maybe we can improve one of our field marshals. We need the military theorist as well to make our doctrines cheaper. And then finally, if we've got a political power to spare, total mobilization, get that Soviet economy humping. We can outproduce the Germans easily if we can just mobilize our economy. Well, your buildup could have been a little bit better. 80 civs as the Soviet Union in 1942, not amazing. Something weird is going on with Turkey, once again. They're in a faction with Italy, suddenly. Yet they're still my puppet, amazingly. As a result, the Axis got hamstrung, which I like, don't get me wrong, that's great. But now I have Turkey being weird. I don't know what they'll do. Why is Turkey capable of doing this? This does not make sense. Did Paradox still not put in a check in their focus tree? They can still make factions as a puppet. They can invite other people into that faction. Why? This is just stupid. We'll have to see how that goes. I'm gonna start by uh, making sure I have reserves in the area. 
just in case Turkey does something stupid. Well, after several months of hard fought, well, fighting, uh, it seems Germany has eased off the gas. There is little more fighting going on here. We've got this more or less stabilized. Uh, construction starting to come in. We built this port and hooked it up into the railway. So the southern tip here is also more or less supplied. Uh, it could be a little better, of course. We're starting to get things done. The supply hub is almost done as well, as well as the railway network. I think we've got this stabilized. Just a little build up now and we can counterattack and we will show Germany why you do not invade Soviet Russia. Time to add logistics companies to my infantry. Yes, it's going to be expensive, but I think it's going to be worth it in the long run, as well as the tanks. They could always use more logistics. It should ease the supply pressure and supply really is our nemesis here with supply sorted. Uh, we can hold this position indefinitely. There is nothing Germany can throw at us at this point. Oh great, non-aggression pacts. Sure, I'll sign those. This is a classic. I just said that there is nothing Germany can throw at us and we've been pushed. Oh, this is bad. I got super, super cocky and I managed to get myself pushed. Now I need to pin these guys into position while the army redeploys to new positions. Oh, this is bad. Ah, I should have seen this coming. Oh, if I can keep that tile pinned, units will redeploy and will We'll see about holding. Uh, the supply hub is built now, so these troops will start getting supply, which is huge. This is definitely gonna... Oh, is this not hooked up to the network? No, it's hooked up to the network. Uh, the game's just confused with the railway being cut here. I can always fix that there. Okay, so supply is once again flowing. Not as optimally as it could be, but it's flowing. Uh, it also looks like Italy finally dealt with Greece. Oh well, oh, this was stupid though. Should have paid more attention. Last stands, last stands, people. They are lifesavers. Oh, I'm I'm destroying my divisions in these attacks. Eww, probably not clever. Let's see if my armor is up for a fight. Maybe I can use them to push the enemy back. Don't have high hopes for it, but if you don't try, you don't know. Eh, looks like we've got them nicely bottled up though. I've got the supply hub. That's just huge. Uh, but I don't think the armor is quite up to the task of pushing this many divisions back. Ah well, as long as I can hold here, I just need to wait for the axis to fall over. They will inevitably fall over. Either they bleed to death on our front line, or they get backdoored big time by the UK and US. Especially with Italy in its own faction, that's just, they're a sitting duck right now. It's just a matter of time before somebody invades them. Well, this just turned into a World War One scenario. They, they pushed the tile because I stopped paying attention for a minute, and that's it. There's not even that many attacks going on and the ones that do happen just go green instantly. So yeah, with this many divisions, just dig in on this side of the river, get yourself supply and you're untouchable. You're pretty much untouchable at this point. Still got a lot of catching up to do in terms of our production though, so... Ooh. Still six months and I think I've got this stable. Stable enough to at least call this saved, but of course it's not saved until victory is achieved. Also little tip, when playing as Russia, get this design company. It is so good. And you can even upgrade it, I think, two more times. This is the one you want. Get this one. I think it's not a cocky move right now to start planning our counterattack. We've endured much and more. I think we can start dreaming of our glorious march to Berlin and Budapest while we're on it. Start building a planning bonus and... <sighs> Hopefully, in a couple of months, counterattack, because this is starting to get ridiculous. You know what? I'm tired of not being able to do anything, so I'm just going to start up a little bit of a naval invasion. Uh, it might be a dumb idea, but I'm going to use my armor. Yes, my armor. And use my armor to go from Crimea and hit the Bulgarians. The Bulgarians... Uh, seem like the weak link in all this. So if I can knock the Bulgarians out, I might have a staging ground to the south here and might open up opportunities to bring Romania into the fold because this front, while I am super comfortable right now, is just not moving. I can't push. There's too many Germans here. And I'm going to use these guys, this yellow army of reserves, and going to move them up to reinforce the tanks. Ah, naval invasion of Italy as well. So I think our troubles are almost over. That's great. That is just... Just great. Let's see if we can get this naval invasion going. I, I just want to get something going on because it feels like I've just been sitting here for quite a while. Oh, oh that doesn't look very successful. Oh, no, never mind. We might actually get some troops to land. Hurrah, our tanks have made landfall. Immediately follow that up with the infantry and we can get this thing going. Just knock Bulgaria out real quick, though. That would be great. Oh, right. I forgot. Apparently supply is still bugged. It's trying to supply these troops from Moscow, which makes sense but it's trying to do that through the Leningrad port so supply is trying to go from Moscow to Leningrad and then 
all the way around Europe up in here and then down there. Instead of sending supply down from Moscow, the reason I cannot supply this naval invasion is because the Germans have the Danish belts closed. So, oh, well, it doesn't matter. I've landed my troops. I can start making some operations happen. We can knock out Bulgaria fairly quickly. The rest of the front still isn't moving. It's just trying to get something done here, I guess. Make it interesting for you guys. This is 100% saved though. Ah, what's this? Socialist Repo. Oh, great. Looks like a fresh Bulgaria just propped up. Uh, it's fine. I'll just invite him to my faction. They can be friends. Oh, that's bad. Uh, Socialist Bulgaria spawned, joined my faction, and immediately called Lithuania into the fray. Oh, oh no, 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 no. That's bad. I wasn't ready for that. Now I need to adjust my front lines to accommodate for Lithuania. Oh, Crap. Oh, and that is Italy on its way out as well. All right, great. Bulgaria's sorted. Can I give them their stuff back? I don't want to occupy this land, Bulgaria. This has actually gone remarkably well. The fall of Bulgaria opens up the Balkans to us. Uh, of course, then there's the Allies doing their regular naval invasions. And we've tied down the entire German military on, well, the front lines. They, they can't come and help. So I think we should be able to do a lot of damage here. Maybe even knock out Hungary if we're quick about it. Yeah. I I would say this is definitely the fall of the Balkans. Uh, tempted to give it back to Yugoslavia, but then again, what has Yugoslavia ever done for us? It's not, it's not even Tito. Why would he help anyone who's not Tito? Okay, we're slowly starting to push into Hungary as well. If we can knock out Hungary, that is another massive blow to the Axis. Might be tempted to just call Romania in just to fill the void that's about to be created there. Well, uh, front is certainly looking disgusting. <laughs> Quite disgusting. Um, I think we're starting to overextend extend here. Let's just halt for a little bit and see what happens. Don't want to get too far ahead of ourselves. Looks like Italy's on its way out. The, yeah, it looks like Italy's um, quite gone. So Balkans thoroughly liberated. Well, at least we've done that. Good opportunity to, I think, backdoor Hungary now. Just going to be supply. That's going to be an issue, but nothing that we cannot beat. All right, let's see if we can push to Budapest. No. Oh. No, I think they've got Budapest well covered. Yeah, supply here is just awful. Uh, probably shouldn't be waging a campaign in this terrain. I suppose I could start pushing from the other side. I mean, Germany will have to redeploy a lot of troops to cover their new front, namely where Italy used to be. So maybe, maybe we can make something happen. So <laughs> my campaign in the Balkans has completely stalled. Like supply is awful here. Plus, you know, all these allied divisions here not helping. So I've just halted my offensive. Just dig in there. We'll see what we can do. I'm going to reorganize my tanks, head north and try to create a an encirclement by pushing through Vitebsk towards Minsk and Vilnius, cut off the northern tip of this front and then see what we can make happen. Huh. Portugal. Really? So Portugal joined Turkey and then declared war on me. God, Turkey, it's, the focus tree is just wrong. Oh God, I want to start my counterattack, but these terrain penalties are fierce. You don't want to start offensives in winter. This is just going to bog down my tanks hopelessly. So I, I need, I kind of need to wait just for winter to be over and snow to be gone. Uh, meanwhile, the Balkans is just a nightmare, a bit of a back and forth World War One scenario. I, I could potentially draw Romania into even the scales, but I don't quite think Romania is up to the task. Also, Turkey continues to be extremely weird. At least we're thoroughly bleeding Germany. We've lost 700,000 Russians. Very sad. We have killed 1.2 million Germans just sitting on our front line. So I'd say we've done well. And Italy is just barely clinging on to life, mostly because the UK is too stupid to push for Venice and Genoa. They just do that. It's over. Of course, it's the AI. What do you expect? All right. So six months of waiting for winter to go away. Uh, it's gone from deep snow to snow. So I figured if I'm going to make anything happen, now's the time. See if I can make some sort of pincer movement here between uh, my divisions in Lithuania and those at Vitebsk. Gonna combine that with, uh, what else do we have here? Sweep the scum out, sure. And 
fight against fascism and oh might as well send my heroes forward let's see if this works switzerland's in the war and italy is out good now let's head towards minsk as well if i can get the minsk i have the local supply under control yay got an encirclement not huge but it's an encirclement i like those okay we're gonna start my counter offensive now it's it's been far too long i can afford the cost and we have the supply hub of minsk under our control now good the north has supplies and now we just start pushing Still a couple of divisions we managed to encircle. To the south here, stalemate. Complete stalemate. I've stopped even looking at it. Rest of the front, stable as usual. I could probably make some large-scale offensives now, because Germany is just overstretched. Got the supply, actually. I could probably just hit go on some of these orders. Just start tearing away at the German army. Oh, yeah. The Russian juggernaut. Oh, no. Nope, bubbles turning red. Bubbles turning red. Oh yeah, well, at least we've obliterated the northern tip of the German army. How about we go playing around to the south now? Try and pin the German southern army between ourselves, the Black Sea, and Romania. So far, so good. Operation going quickly. They're just not fast enough to intercept me. As long as the infantry follows behind to close the gap, uh, we're fine. Another encirclement here, and that is two pretty decent pockets, if we can close it. Am I overextended to the north there oh well still we've got the south here crushed oh and we closed the north as well good 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 these encirclements this is this is why you watch these videos right right i love watching this it's so soothing seeing those divisions just vanish all gone no more German army. All right, Rokosovsky, let's start driving. We're heading for the border. As long as the infantry follows behind the armor so they don't get encircled, this works remarkably well. And encirclement complete. Yes. Oh, lovely. Absolutely lovely. German casualties have to be mounting. Oh, yeah, we've inflicted a million casualties in our offensive. So, well, 2.1 million German dead and more are coming every day. I could try for the meme just to cut across Poland and, and meet at Lithuania, but I think that's a little, little ambitious. I don't, I don't think that's going to work out for me. Meeting in Lithuania might be ambitious, but I can push towards Kiev, create another encirclement here, and then just cut the Soviet... Oh, wait. <laughs> cut the German army apart bit by bit. I know it's getting late. It's 1944. It's been going on for quite a while, but I'm just trying to do this methodically now. I'm having fun, and this is just the way I like to play Hearts of Iron 4. Slowly and systematically destroy the enemy with minimal casualties. Well, minimal casualties on our side. All right, if we can get the Kiev. Come on. Well, if we can't take Kiev, I'll go to the south of Kiev. Come on, I need I need to close this. This is this is too juicy. Just slowly closing the net around Kiev. Uh, this is this is quite the operation I'm uh, pulling off here. Just trying to work my way along the railway network, trying to cut the, the German supply as much as I can, and then just slowly closing the cauldron or the castle or whatever. Just trying to create a pocket here. All right, if I can punch through to that province, reinforce the combat from there. You pin them place and might happen come on punch through ah yes ah kiev is entirely encircled time to clean up kiev i'll just push in from the south and smash my way through how's europe looking oh i i've not been paying much attention to the rest of europe don't want to fall behind there when i get my slice of the pie so i'm gonna start an offensive in the north while i clean up this pocket here and just go 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 yeah i, I think germany's broken I've, <laughs> we've done enough damage as it is. I think I can just walk towards Berlin now. How are the casualties looking? Four million and climbing. And we have definitely contributed the lion's share. You look at the amount of divisions in here. Ooh, spicy. Want to see this climb? 2.5 million. We're going to close the pocket soon. What's it going to be? What's it going to be? Oh man, this is 50, uh, 46 divisions. Yeah, that was, oh, there are 3 million casualties already. See another opportunity here for the armor. If you can just smash through quickly in our pocket great i can just battle plan my way to berlin now though it's this this is over the german army's dead it looks like we're creating some sort of greater lithuania fine I'll accept it. See if I cannot get my armor to go south here and create another encircle. That's a death blow. If I can close that, th there's no more German army. And there we go. That would be the end of the German army right there. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry, Schmittler, but I'm really not. 
you know... You know, tanks might not be cost-effective. They're incredibly fun to employ, though. It's just so satisfying seeing these big numbers, seeing these big, big encirclements. Dozens of helpless Germans trapped in a disaster of their own making. This is what you get. This is what you get when you invade the Soviet Union. You should know this by now. Never go to war in Russia. You know, I don't like how big Lithuania has become. It's not like they've done that much. It's already December of 44. I gotta hurry or I'll, I'll not even make the historical date. Oh, I've been so slow. Now let's get in a little bloody. Um, I'm losing a lot of equipment. Ooh, a lot of equipment and a lot of manpower. Yes, I know. But we're still doing much better than the Germans at any rate. Oh, I've thrown so many men away here. I think I've thrown a million of them away in this pointless offensive, but, but, we're still doing better than Germany and that's what matters. Just gotta capitulate Germany and we can, uh, we can just call this a day. Huh? Fortunately, I've just noticed whoever sent this in did a ton of collaboration government, so this is great. It's almost over. Germany, they've got so much collaboration, they'll fall over any minute now. And that will be the end of that. No, no, well, something happened. Anyway, Germany has fallen over flat on its face. Let's get a good juicy peace deal out of this and we can call it a day. And with that, we are done. Well, technically we're not because there's, what What the hell, Fatherland Front? Anyway, with that, we're done. Except for, for some reasons, the Axis is still around in Slovakia, but that's it. There's this weird faction going on with Turkey and I, I, I don't think I can technically capitulate them. Oh. Portugal is considered a major power. I could naval invade Portugal, but really, I, I, I don't care enough at this point. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. I know I had a lot of fun. It was a difficult start, but it ended up being quite enjoyable. It was a lot of sitting on my ass, though. So I hope in the next video I can do better. Anyway, with that, we're done. It's a pretty disgusting looking peace deal, but hey, got a big common turn. And the, the world's still weird because Slovakia never, never gave up. And Portugal's still fighting us. And Turkey is just... Turkey. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed that video. If you did, leave a like, consider subscribing and hit that bell icon to be notified whenever I upload more content. And check out this video, I've selected it just for you. I know you'll love it.